What's up everyone, welcome to the Cracker Crumbs update. And this is the face of Urban Street Justice. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I was mistaken for a criminal half the time. But uh yeah, you can see again. Um Yeah, my last video was talking about how crazy it's gotten around here. And uh it's getting worse. It seems to be getting worse. They're claiming um a lot of gas stations by me have signs up claiming they don't know when they're going to get gas. So people are flipping out. Uh, some gas stations are claiming they're getting gas on Tuesday. And, you know, it's a whole big thing. And a lot of uh, food stores, pretty much almost every food store by me, except for one, is still not open due to the fact they have no power. And um, they even have signs on, on, their, on the store saying that due to the fact that their power is gone and their generators are pretty much shot, uh, all the food that they do have that was like meat related uh, frozen stuff is just done they, they don't have it they had to toss it all out um, and the one store by me that actually does have somewhat power um, they're pretty much out of everything and people are going crazy around here um, a friend of mine was actually attacked uh, walking to a gas station because the guy wanted her gas can that she was walking to the gas station with uh, robbed her of her gas can uh, it's nuts. Uh, people were getting, you know, like I said, some, some guy got nailed in the kneecap uh, over a loaf of bread. It, it just, it's just amazing how quickly things can, can go from bad to worse, number one, but how quickly people, uh, you know, turn vicious over like the, you know, it's not like they're saying that we're going to be out of food and out of, you know, gas forever. It's, people can't wait a week. Really, you're going to resort to, to violence over just trying to relax and calm it down and saying, all right, let me figure this out, rather than go shoot somebody and steal their car, uh, the gas, siphon their gas from their car. I mean, I was using this thing. Granted, it's an air rifle. It shoots metal BBs and, and these metal, uh, they're not just BBs, they're, um, they look like little arrows kind of thing. They're like shrapnel looking things. They're crazy looking. And those, those can kill you, you know, I mean, the metal beaver can kill you too, but this, the other stuff I have can really give you a bad day. And, uh, like I said, I was sitting on my porch all day yesterday, well, all night, actually, with this thing. And it's got a, I fixed the, uh, the scope where it's pretty balls-on accurate there. And, uh, shot a guy right in his balls, and he dropped pretty fast, and, uh, I must have used this, like, I went through about 60 BBs yesterday, just nailing people that were freaking roaming around the street doing stupid shit. And trying to break into people's houses and all this stuff. Crazy, crazy, crazy times. Um, I'm going to do somewhat of a comic review. Uh, but first I want to uh, just say uh, I hope uh, uh, Coast and Bromstar said it right finally. I hope you're feeling you know better and I know you haven't been feeling well. And um, Legendary Collectible, I hope, I hope you're doing alright too. Um, Hippies Collectibles, you know, uh, you know, my prayers and everything go out to your friend Katie, and uh, Mongo Stomp Time 7 I'm really sorry to hear about your friend, man. It, it's it's tough. Uh, life is uh is kind of crazy lately. Uh, alrighty. Um, moving on, moving on, doing a quick review. Uh, I did just watch the new Walking Dead, which was friggin' awesome. Uh, I really liked it. I thought it was really cool, and that was uh joking with my friend <laughs> we were watching and he's like and I was like where's Carl oh he's <laughs> he's out shooting his mother he'll be back soon uh, hopefully that didn't ruin anything for anybody but uh <laughs> yeah my, my friend he, you know we kind of got the same sense of humor and he was on Facebook and he was saying that it's amazing like around uh, Long Island uh, how people have gotten crazy over gas he's like it's it's like Mad Max and I was like welcome to the Thunderdome bitch <laughs> but uh anyway let me do a quick quick review here. I got a chance to read a lot of comics uh, lately. Uh, let's do Nightwing number 13. The first appearance of Lady Shiva in the New 52. Um, it was, it was alright. I, I wasn't too thrilled by it. it it's kind of cool how uh, Nightwing's trying to open up a circus now in honor of the circus that he used to work for. But um, it wasn't all that interesting other than that. And the funny thing is this is one I don't quite understand, which, you know, maybe uh, I missed something, which I probably did. But, um, in the old continuity of, you know, of DC, Barbara Gordon was shot by the Joker and paralyzed. And, um, 
when you read the New 52, they make it look like that never happened, where, you know, she was never paralyzed, you know, she was never shot by the Joker. And, uh, like, if you eat, read number zero, it shows when she was, you know, becoming Batgirl. If you read issue number one, same kind of thing, like, it had nothing to do with really the Joker. But, um, unless I... Unless it did. I don't, I don't think it did. I don't really remember. I'll have to reread it then if I'm wrong. But in this thing, she shows up and she's talking about how the Joker shot her and how she overcame her paralysis and all this stuff. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, alright, if they're trying to do the New 52 is supposed to be from scratch, now all of a sudden she is shot by the Joker when originally she wasn't, so I, I don't I don't know. Um, next one is Talon, number one. Um, this isn't, isn't bad. I'm looking to see how, how it goes. Because number zero I liked, I thought it was cool. But there is just uh, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of talking in this. Uh, so it's a, it's almost overkill. Uh, moving on to Red Lanterns at number 13, which is the Rise of the Third Army tie-in. Um, eh, it was alright. Uh, it's just funny because a lot of these, the 13 books... Um, they just start to get going, like a little bit, like where you're kind of like, oh, you know, what's going to happen next? And then they cut the series, you know, well, cut the issue, and then in the back is like a like nine-page thing of Superman. And I'm like, okay, that's cool, but, you know, I, I didn't like this one all that much. I didn't think it was all that great. Um, another one that was kind of iffy, uh, but it, it does show how crazy the Guardians are getting, I guess. Green Lantern Corpse, uh, Corp. Corpse, whatever you want to call it, uh, number 13, where Guy Gardner uh, be, is promoted to, I forget what the hell is, some like Sentinel kind of thing, like a new uh, rank in the Green Lantern Corps, and uh, basically the Guardians set him up, you know, they, they free this uh, this guy, I forget what the hell he was called, they free him and, you know, uh, they tell Gardner that he's going after uh, his family. So, Gardner is supposed to take these delegate people to Owa to sign a peace treaty, and he kind of bails and says, you know, I have to go save my family, and they basically throw him into a trap, so they're trying to wipe him out, I guess. Um, wasn't too bad, it wasn't too bad, it was it was better than the Red Lantern one. And um, this one's kind of interesting, because Kyle Rayner I always thought was cool. Green Lanterns and New Guardians, uh, basically in this thing... Uh, Star Sapphire here gets a hold of the Red Lantern, Atroticus, and because apparently Kyle Rayner can now absorb or use other rings besides the, the Green Lantern ring, and he turns in the Red Lantern, which is pretty crazy, so this one wasn't too bad. Um, this one was a pretty big disappointment. I didn't like this one at all. Red Hood and the Outlaws, number 13, uh, takes place on uh, Star Starfire, I think her name is, Home Planet or whatever it is. It was just boring as hell. I was just like, eh. Um, this one was kind of interesting in a way. I'm kind of looking to see what happens. The DC Universe presents Black Lightning and Blue Devil, which number 13, which is their first appearance in the New 52. It was interesting. It was, it was not really going to get too into it because there really wasn't much to it, but it was just interesting artwork and stuff. Um, another one that was quite interesting was Blue Beetle number 13. It's just kind of cool how they kind of delve into how the Blue Beetle came around, and they have a zombie, There's zombies are everywhere, um, this one kind of sucked too, Supergirl number 13, wasn't all that great, cool cover, but this wasn't all that cool, and another one that kind of sucked, but which is weird as hell, uh, Superboy number 13, apparently he, uh, comes up with Matrix powers, uh, Matrix, Matrix powers, like he, they all start shooting at him, and he just goes like this, and then all of a sudden all the bullets stop, and then he just kind of like, I don't know what he does, but he just like gets into a rage or something, pulls his arms back and shoots this huge like dome of heat vision, I guess, everywhere and destroys everything. Um, but on that, I mean, it really wasn't that cool. I was kind of disappointed with a lot of the DC stuff. Um, I am trying to get a, a comic book hole. Uh, I missed last week's, and... Uh, I was going to order this week's stuff, uh, because a lot of the stores just don't have any of the stuff left. Um, a mock time that I went to, I usually go to, they were out of everything, they're always going to be out of everything, because apparently it's all, like I said, it's all pre-orders now. Uh, Bailey's did have a few things, but the ones they had left were, like, ripped, so I was like, oh. So, I don't know. Um, 
Midtown apparently has a, a, another shipment, especially when they shut down. I guess maybe they didn't sell everything. Because when I went on there originally, they were sold out of all the stuff from last week. But I went on there recently, and they still have the stuff from last week. Now they're claiming they have it in stock. Uh, they still have Batgirl Annual Number 1. So that one I'm going to have to track down, just like Catwoman eventually. But um, some of the other ones they have, and uh, the stuff from coming around, they, they have the pre-orders on. Uh, but I don't know, I gotta say, on top of the fact of everything that's going around here, uh, we definitely need to, my fiance and I definitely have to watch our money because our banks still aren't working. Uh, a lot of the stores that are around here aren't taking any credit card because they don't have the power for it. Um, so it's insane. So as much as I want to order the comics, I'm kind of on edge where I'm like, oh, I can't, I can't order them. Because if I order them and we need the money, then we're like, oh man. Um... So it's, it's rough, it's rough. Granted, you order them, you know, we're using the credit card, but even still, uh, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. So who knows if I'll have one of those, but I am going to, I'm still working on my, my new and improved intro um, intro to the uh, to the show. Um, it's taken a long time because power around here, it, it's weird. Like, I'm still the only one on my entire, actually, the, the only one within like a four block radius that doesn't have any, that has power over everyone else. Um, actually my neighbor just finally got his generator up from work and he spent uh, nine hours on uh, at a gas station to get gas waiting online with a gas can uh, so that's crazy and uh, so the intro is taking a while because it's I'm, I'm trying to put the stuff together and then I'll lose power and I have to start all over again oh man but anyway uh, also dynamic comic duo that was an awesome video with your cat uh, Gus Mustard <laughs> cool cat, cool cat. I actually used to have a cat um, named Rocky uh, who thought he was human as well, and I actually taught him how to box because I figured with the name Rocky, he has to know how to do something like that. And uh, if I had a video camera back then, I definitely would have taped it. But he was uh, he was definitely a cool cat too. He he'd lean up on his uh, hind paws, and he was a fat cat, so his belly was always like bringing him back forward. But I actually taught him like he would hold hold his paws up, and he would he would jab do a couple jabs and then he would spin around and do another couple jabs then he would get tired because he was fat and he, he would lay down for like three hours but um very cool video uh yes and another thing that's kind of cool i was normally i usually say you know see everyone later or you know uh thanks for watching stuff like that i actually came up with a, an interesting ending catchphrase i guess who knows if it's going to be great or not but what the hell i'll give it a shot uh to end my little segment in a second uh, if you like we see, hit the like button. If you like we see, hit the subscribe button. I appreciate all my new subscribers, on top of all my old subscribers. Um, I'm still trying to catch up on everyone's videos. Uh, but for my phrase, my catchphrase, my ending catchphrase, I wrote it down. Let's 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 hope it uh, hope it does well. It doesn't matter how big your man cave is. All that matters is what you put in it. <laughs>